<laughs> okay. My name uh, is Rhea Betsui, and but most people call me Rhea. I wouldn't say professionally. I'm still uh, a, I'm a PhD candidate, so I am in the field of chemistry, specifically computational chemistry at the moment. And technically, I'm a student, but then um, there are a lot of there, there are a lot of uh, articles out there of why you shouldn't call PhD students students because they technically not. They, I'm a research student. Yeah, so it's basically I'm, I'm still doing chemistry, but it would be modeling. And I, I'm not in a wet lab mixing chemicals. I am in front of a computer running calculations or uh, doing some kind of modeling. You know what, I would, I don't think it's a particular thing. I would just tell you of moments of instances where I felt really proud is when I was nervous to take up something, but I still did it anyways. And maybe the more recent example of it was when I decided to apply for a PhD abroad. I was so nervous. I didn't even think it would go through, but I'm just so glad that I actually did it. I did it anyways, even though I was scared. I, what I've been thinking about lately is <clears throat> loving myself creatively. And the way I think of it is loving what's really different about me. Mm -hmm. And the reason um, I'm challenged, this is a challenge that I'm putting to myself, even though I'm not there yet. But I've seen a lot of women where, uh, where they have quite quirky features and and then they'd still, you know, rock them in a different way. Like if you don't have eyelashes and you just rock a natural face and it works with the way you put everything else together and the way you accessorize yourself. And I think that's just loving yourself creatively. There's so many things that we could find wrong about how our bodies look or how our features look, look like. But then there's always a way to... Um, you know, put it together in such a way that you can um, end up loving it. And so, yeah, claiming my body uh, would mean to me just loving those parts of me, which I've hated for so long in a creative way and making them work. If the way I'd answer this question would have to do with the way I grew up as a woman in the world and the spaces that I found myself in. Um, so I think because women have been um, such a mm -hmm. marginalized group of people in the society that inherently, um, not, um, inherently when we grow up, we understand what inclus inclusivity means. We understand how to create safe spaces. And I really do enjoy that about I really do enjoy that part about myself where I understand what a safe space is and I understand when I've created an unsafe space for someone else because I know how it feels. I have a firsthand experience of it. So that's what I enjoy about womanhood. And another thing I also do enjoy is how, um, is how lately we've just um, been expanding what womanhood means and um, if you just summarize what's been happening, it would womanhood is just breaking out of the box that we've been put, that we've been put in, or that we ourselves have put uh, ourselves in. And so, yeah, that's what I've, I'm enjoying at the moment. Just um, I, my womanhood doesn't actually have to look a certain way, and I can define it for myself. My answer would be the same as probably, hopefully any other woman is patriarchy, um, the fact that the, the power of the world is largely 
um, with men and women are excluded from it. And the way it manifests in societies, the way we don't have equal footings for simple things like uh, the duration of our maternity, the duration of the paternity leave versus the duration of the maternity leave, mm-hmm. or the fact that there are not a lot of women in powerful positions, which means mm-hmm. that women are, they're not part of decisions, they're not at the table, that those are the problems that I would see and somehow experience as well in, in my life one way or another. And also another way that it manifests itself would also be Uh, violence that is targeted towards women and yeah it doesn't matter how educated you are how intelligent you are how capable you are you still you still have um, a level of violence targeted towards you recent example being Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez I think she's such a baddie but then she even her she she was still, you know, she's still targeted um, by those sort of things. So, yeah. yeah. I don't have, I have so many women that inspire me for the little characteristics that they have. The way I would phrase the question would be, you know, what characteristics um, in a particular woman would you identify identify with so um on top of my head without any particular order at all um i just my mom-in-law is like her like her characteristics of just taking risks and being um a natural leader is a thing that inspires me about her or um say nomza mombata who's just like so full of ambition and focus and also just like so in touch with um, her spirituality. So that's what I look, look up to. You know, um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who um, she's just uh, so authentic to what she stands for. In a room full of, she's probably like in a room where she's not supposed to be, but then she's still bringing in the fire. She's still bringing in her ideals. She, you know, in such a way that, would portray that her thoughts do matter. And I really, um, I'm really inspired by that. So it's not going to be a lengthy answer. It's like a funny one for me. But like one thing I've learned from the women that I've encountered in my life is that they don't look like their problems. (laughs) And and that's what that's the motto I will live by. No matter how sad I am, I still want to look cute while being sad. <laughs> I sometimes want that ability to, you know, schedule the sadness. And I guess I guess that you know, coming with the the more responsibility that you take on and the more roles you have, mm-hmm. you'd somehow have to schedule uh, schedule being sad if you have to lead a group of people and you need to show up, um, I mean, not in a toxic way though, where yeah. you just like always feel like you have to be fine all the time, but then, you know, in certain instances where you have to show up despite being sad or despite being demotivated or despite mm-hmm. being anxious. So yeah, just the doing it, being scared, you realize that mm-hmm. I do quite a lot. Whether I've slid into someone's DM or, you know, ask some, like some, a simple thing like asking someone for coffee and I was nervous to ask them out for coffee. Um, so, and that is me. I feel like a baddie every time I step out of my comfort zone. So doing things while being scared makes me feel like a baddie. And another simple trick um, that a thing that makes me feel like a baddie is wearing platforms and an oversized jacket. That, make, that makes me feel like a baddie because, you know, you just look so cool and you look so confident. And yeah, that's, that's another thing. <laughs> so many. I think the most important thing would be Girl, you have no idea how capable you are. 
Um, I mean, you can have fears, but then um, they do not define uh, what you what you can achieve and what you can't. Mm-hmm. Be encouraged, trust, and and also do not fear people. Mm-hmm. Um, that appearances have nothing to do with it. Um, the people that you think have it figured out, they also don't have it figured out like you don't and don't seek counsel so much because you think um, you, you don't have the answers. You do have the answers. And disclaimer, I believe in counsel. I think, I think people have the answer, like some p- people could have the answers that you're looking for. Um, and also, and also um, they have different perspectives. So I do believe mm-hmm. in counsel. I just think what I mean is do not readily seek counsel because you don't trust yourself. Seeking counsel also me- means um, you want someone to process a really confusing thing mm. with you. No. <laughs> it's bad. I mean, there are women in, there, there would be women that I know that would be in that would be gatekeepers in my field, say specifically in the computational chemistry field, but then also um, in a, in academic spaces in general for chemistry students. Um, in first year, it would start off as you know about fifty fifty, but then that number tapers off. You end up in already at a master's level. You have about thirty women graduating with their master's degrees. So I wish there was, but um, there isn't. Oh, that's a difficult question, but also an easy one at the same time. I don't have the perfect answer to it, but I think holding everyone accountable. The, the fact of the matter is that we need more women to be gatekeepers. And that means they participate in the major decisions that are, have to be made in the way our societies and our nations would be shaped. We definitely do need uh, female gatekeepers because they, would, they bring a different perspective and representation really matters. Um, so, yes. And also keeping everyone accountable, men and women alike, that I think the the idea of elitism in it it can it can affect anyone. Um, even when you're educated and even if the doors were opened for you by someone else, you can sometimes you can find yourself in spaces if you are the only black a person in there or if you're the only woman in there you might think of yourself as the you know some some kind of oddity some kind of a special thing mm-hmm. but like we would we always need to check ourselves and keep ourselves accountable that if we are somehow as well if we can open doors for some people but then we also have that mentality of being special and we we actually like being the only um the only woman or the only black person in the room, then we we would then close doors to other people. We don't we wouldn't even um, do a simple thing like share share information for people who would need it. So keeping people accountable, both men and women, both male and females. I don't think I've thought uh, about these questions before or, you know, like claiming your body back. What does, you know, an ideal body image. Yeah. Uh, you know, how does that look like? I, it, in a good way, yeah. um, I feel challenged by them. And I'm so glad that you included me in this. Thank you um, so much. <laughs>